Hey, welcome to Board Game Casual. A few weeks ago, I took a chance on buying a copy of Big Boss after seeing it on sale for $10 on Amazon. It looked pretty fun from the reviews, and I figured for 10 bucks, even if I only get one play out of it, it'll be worth it. Well, I actually had the chance to get it to the table where I got in a two-player game with my girlfriend who was excited to try it out. So the big question is, was it worth the 10 bucks I paid for it? In a word, definitely. This might be the best deal I have ever gotten on a board game. At 10 bucks, this game is an absolute steal. It's a ton of fun. I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did, and the production quality is top notch. In Big Boss, players are playing cards to build or grow companies with these awesome plastic Lego style pieces. Players can buy stock in any company on the board, so you're not necessarily tied to the ones that you build. And as companies get bigger, their value, the stock price, goes up. Space on the board is finite, so eventually companies may get so big that they'll merge, and one will acquire the other. This means payouts for the players who own stock in the company being acquired, before it ultimately gets removed from the game, and a huge jump in the stock price of the company remaining. The game ends when the last building piece is placed, and the player with the most money wins. Gameplay This game is very straightforward. On your turn, you're basically choosing one of two actions. Buying a card to add to your hand, or playing a card from your hand, which is how you build or grow companies. And then you also get the option to buy stock shares. So overall, turns are pretty snappy, and it plays at a good pace. Even though you're choosing between two simple actions, the decisions you're making are really fun. You're choosing when to invest in what companies and when to grow them. Trying to maximize your returns all while keeping an eye on what your opponents are investing in. Even just the decision between those two actions is nice and meaty. You may be all ready to play a card that'll make you some big money by growing a company but then you see a really good card come out in the market, and so maybe it's better to use your turn to grab that instead. Or maybe there's a card you really wanna buy, but you don't have any money, so instead you've gotta play a card from your hand to make some money and hope that the card you want is still there on your next turn. There's a fun underlying push your luck element where maybe you're forming a strategy in hopes that a particular card will come out or a particular company will merge with another. The game overall has a nice organic progression, full of twists, yet allows you to pivot along the way. For example, in our game, the Kingdom Company started out really hot. I had a lot of cards for it, I built my strategy around it as it was looking like it was going to dominate. But towards the later half of the game, it got surpassed by so many of the other companies and wasn't even one of the top five. So I shifted my strategy as a result, and I certainly didn't feel like I was doomed because of a poor choice I made early on. I really like that about this game. Production quality. In terms of production quality, it's fantastic. The art in the game is this Roaring Twenties Art Deco style that I just absolutely love. My girlfriend and I enjoy just looking through all the art on the cards. The components are nice and chunky, but also very detailed. You know, these easily could have been plain blocks, but instead are made to look like pieces of a skyscraper. And the game really becomes a cityscape as it goes along. Besides just being different colors, the company toppers each have a unique mold. You can tell a lot of thought was put into the details and architecture of each one. They're beautiful to look at. Big Boss has a dual layer board, so the building blocks fit right into the sunken tracks and keeps them from sliding around. The game even includes two large double bowl component trays for the money tokens, and the money tokens come pre-punched out. I mean, the production is amazing. I feel like that's pretty unheard of by today's standards. So let's talk about what I like most about Big Boss. I've basically covered a lot of this already, but to summarize, the production quality and components are fantastic. It has a great table presence, it has quick, snappy turns, really fun decisions to make, you have great moments of feeling clever or lucky or powerful, you can adjust your strategy as the game goes along, and it's easy to learn and easy to teach. All right, let's talk about what I like least about the game. And honestly, 
I'm a bit stumped. I'm struggling for what to say here. I really like this game. I suppose if I had two wishes, I wish the cards were full size. The cards for the stocks were fine, but the building and level cards felt a bit small and would be so much nicer if they were larger, especially since the art on the cards is so cool. Secondly, it's amazing they included trays for the money tokens in the first place, but I wish those trays had covers, because then you could store the money directly in the trays rather than having to put them into bags when you tear down the game. Again, these are barely complaints about the game itself. Final thoughts on Big Boss? I was really excited to get this game for $10, and having watched a few playthroughs, I had a pretty good feeling that I'd like it, but I didn't expect to like it as much as I did. It was by far worth the $10 I paid for it, and I easily think it's worth double that, probably even triple. I mean, if this were someone else's copy that I was playing for the first time, I would very likely go and try to find myself a copy for 30 something bucks so I could have a copy on my shelf. Even more surprising, this is a pretty old game. Big Boss was originally published in 1994, and that, at least to me, is earlier than what I personally consider modern board games. This Funko version is a modern reprint, with some updated rules that I hear for the better. Though it also includes everything you need if you want to play by the classic rules, too. So if you're wondering how Big Boss holds up by today's standards, well, as someone who's playing it for the first time, it felt modern and fresh, and I can definitely say it holds up in 2024. I'm giving Big Boss an ecstatic 8.5. It's really good. I'm eager to play it again at some higher player counts and see if that raises the score even further. I could see this edging closer to a 9, but for now, I'm going with an 8.5. It's a really solid game and an amazing deal if you can find it for under 20 bucks. Right now, this is certainly a candidate for making my top 10 list for 2024, which says a lot for a $10 game that's 30 years old. By the way, here's a quick tip. The game comes with a nice big bag for all the building pieces, but I actually found that it was a bit hard to fit properly into the box. So instead, I found everything fits better when you just put the pieces into a few stacks. If you've played Big Boss, I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. I've also heard a lot of comparisons made to the game Acquire, which is another game I've never played. So if you've played both, I'd love to hear your thoughts on how they compare as well. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for liking and subscribing. Those subscribes really mean a lot to the channel. And I'll see you next time here on Board Game Casual.